But I want to kind of you know pick apart a, a few different articles and just things that I've seen recently that that just kind of make my blood boil, if I'm being totally honest. And so this first article uh, is entitled "What I've L- Learned from Visiting a Hundred Plus Open Houses in a Year," and it, and it comes from a very reputable reputable website. Um, Realtor.com, but the article is written by a former screenwriter turned freelance journalist. And so I think the first thing we have to say is, you know, does that sound like an authority on real estate matters? You know, why this website even agreed to post this article is beyond me, but it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And so, first of all, I, I would hope that people that are listening would question the opinion and validity of a person that uh, visits over a hundred open houses before they buy something. I mean, that in and of itself should be somewhat of a red flag. And the buyer says in the first paragraph of her article, quote, let me be clear. I'm not some overly picky real estate window shopper because I have made offers and I've just been outbid. Where I'm looking, that's just par for the course. End quote. And so there are several parts of this article that just that that justify why I believe covering this in my show today is is one of the best things I can do to help you prepare for the process of buying, selling, and investing in real estate, which is what this show is all about. And I, I promise you this is not going to just be me complaining for the next you know, 30, 45 minutes. Uh, I want you guys to walk away from the show with, with some usable, reliable information. But obviously, I need to set the stage a little bit here, right? So um, one of her articles talks about um, personal quirks on display. And it says, steak sauce, mustard, and hot sauce. These condiments were not in the kitchen, as one would expect but on a dresser in a bedroom of an open house I attended. Right then and there, I knew I had to get out of that house. Who knows what was going on there, but it was just too weird for me to stick around and ponder the possibilities. So she goes on to say, remove all personal items, including family photos, unusual collectibles, memorabilia, and misplaced condiments. (laughs) So my, I mean, first of all, yes, first impressions are important. You know, put yourself uh, in my shoes, for a minute, the shoes of a real estate agent. Let's say that I, you know, you're a realtor. You've taken time out of your weekend to show homes to a prospective buyer, you know, rather than spending some quality time with your family. And you put in a lot of time and effort and research into the homes that you're showing your client because you believe this fits their needs. You know, something they should be interested enough to make an offer, right? And so then you walk into a bedroom, and the buyer starts talking about condiments on a dresser, and then they say they have to leave the house immediately that this home just must not be for them. I mean, you would think that that buyer is a little off their rocker, right? I mean, the fact that this kind of information is passing off as advice is just, it's silly to me. And if you can't focus on the house instead of the condiments on the dresser, then maybe you need to do a checkup from the neck up. Maybe you need to focus a little bit more on the real estate. And if you're working with a real estate agent that's walking around and they're pointing these things out and they're looking at family photos and I mean, there have been so many times, so many clients that we've worked with where, you know, agents are sitting there bad mouthing decor and family photo. It was just totally unprofessional. I mean, you just wouldn't believe some of the ridiculous, useless feedback that we get on some of our listings as well. So if you're trying to buy a house and the realtor is, you know, making these comments, They're not helping you, and you need to find a a real professional. But anyways, enough about that. Back to the article. Uh, Just make sure you're working with a professional realtor. That's that's all I'll say about that. But um, she goes on to say that, you know, she was walking through a condo that, uh, at least online, she loved. And the showing was going really well until she looked in the pantry. And she noticed a bunch of packaging she remembered from her childhood at her grandmother's house. She immediately realized the place needed a ton of work and didn't proceed. Which, and so my comments on that, I mean, that's just a ridiculous generalization that's really just kind of unfair to all parties involved. They may have kept their property in immaculate condition and just chose not to do things cosmetically to update it. I mean, as a buyer, try not to read too much into things. You know, as a seller, if you and your agent are concerned that buyers are going to question the quality of your home because it's simply outdated, then you can kind of quell that fear-based distraction by getting a pre-listing home inspection, which is something we offer for free when you list with us. And I don't want you to think that I'm just picking on this person in this article um, because she's turned her sh- home shopping experience into 
uh, an entertaining story disguised as useful information. I mean, there's plenty of other articles out there from from multiple sites that would be considered to be reputable. And one of them is, uh, you know, seven small home flaws that could be big deals for buyers. And it opens with saying, after living in the same home for a while, it's amazing what you can get used to. A creaky floorboard, for instance, a chipped tile that you've been meaning to replace, a doorknob that needs a little coating to turn. No big deal, right? Well, these small flaws could be huge deal breakers when you decide to sell your house. I mean, so I mean, so you're online. You're reading these articles to help prepare you for your for your upcoming home sale, your upcoming home purchase, and you read a sentence like that. I mean, do you do you keep reading? Yeah, of course you do. I mean, that's a nice little hook right there. You know, what are these what are these hidden things that are clearly causing huge issues for home sellers? You know, what as a buyer can I add to the list of uh you know, things to potentially uh get more money out of the seller? You know, what else can I play hardball on and and force sellers to cave on and buckle under my every demand? <laughs> you know, before I pick this article apart, let me just give you a little dose of, of reality, I suppose. In many areas of Charleston, it's still a seller's market. Now, like as I just mentioned, Mount Pleasant, 750 to a million, it is not a seller's market right now. You need to have realistic expectations about how this process is going to go before you start it. And I, you know, there there are so many things in this article that are suggested that I think are just setting you up for for heartbreak. I mean, here's another example. The location of your laundry room is what this says. You know, even if you own a state-of-the-art washer and dryer and plan to bestow them to your lucky buyers, they may not be so thrilled with these nice appliances if they aren't situated in what they think is the right place. You might be fine doing your laundry in your dining room or in your garage, but don't expect all buyers to feel the same way. Offer to move these things to a new locale to warm buyers up. And so guess what you've just done right there? You've, you've given something away for free. Buyers might be totally fine with the location of your laundry room, but now that they're, they, they know you're willing to spend money on that, on that perceived issue, so they're going to apply it to something else. You know, if they're fine with that laundry room, but they know it's going to cost you a pretty penny to move that stuff, they're just going to apply that discount elsewhere. And then you're going to say, well, wait a minute, I didn't agree to that. Well, yeah, you kind of did. You've, you've always you've preemptively drawn attention to something that buyers might not have noticed before, which is the other issue. You know, the better option would be to offer this as an option after the fact in an attempt to try and put a deal together. And of course, in order to do that, you have to be working with an agent that's, that's committed to actually monitoring the feedback of your home and talking with the agent that showed the property over the phone and, and acting as a salesman to try and put a deal together. But unfortunately, you know, with all the sellers we work with, you know, over 60% of the homes that we sell were previously listed with other real estate agents before we were hired to sell it. And so with all these sellers we work with, the majority of them um, are, are saying to us, you know, communication was the biggest issue with our previous client, and we don't know what the feedback was. You know, they're, they're taking feedback at face value, even if it's produced in, in the first place, and they're not digging deeper to see if something could have been done to overcome the objection and make a sale, which is just sales 101. But, you know, so many so many agents out there have, have kind of lost the art of selling because they're so darn used to the market being so easy. They stick a sign in the yard, they put it in the MLS, they take some nice photos, and then they sell a house, and they make thousands and thousands of dollars. Seems pretty good, right? Here's the last example I'm going to give you on this, on this article, and I'm going to switch gears just a little bit, but this one to me is just, Oh my God, it's so ridiculous. The walls of your kitchen. Some people like, no, make that love open kitchens. So if your kitchen currently has four walls, you're probably in trouble. Buyers might look at the possibility of breaking down a wall, but be warned, many might not want to do the work or just get such a bad first impression of your kitchen that they move on entirely. If you think your kitchen's four walls feel cramped and is stalling your sale, Consider opening it up yourself. Here's how to knock down a wall. Oh my God. Please do not knock down a wall in your house from some sort of 
article that you've read online. That is just, that is absurd to me. Join us for another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show next Saturday morning at 9 and Sunday morning at 10. Contact Brian Beatty online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-345-1273. 843-345-1273.